I didn't want to get on a blood pressure medication because once you're on that stuff, who, how are you going to get off? So my doctor said I should try meditation. A portal lies hidden just beyond our conscious reach. A window to spiritual peace, free from the clutter of suffering. As we strive, so we fall, but still we reach to open the garage door of the mind. Thank you to Birch for sponsoring this video. Their Memorial Day sale is running now. They will be offering 25% off for a limited time. Check the Birch site for more details. Birch makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It was important for me to choose a Birch mattress that is made with organic and natural materials because I can sleep easy now, knowing I'm avoiding harmful off-gassing that can happen in a mattress manufacturing process. In addition to being better mattress for me, Birch is committed to being better for the planet. I love that throughout the creation of their mattresses, Birch ensures that the materials are produced and harvested sustainably. I ordered the Birch Lux mattress, a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch mattresses. I've had my Birch mattress for three, four months now, and what I love is that having a non-toxic, 100% environmentally friendly mattress is amazing, and I'm sleeping real good. I'm resting and easy with your birch mattress you get a hundred night sleep trial guarantee along with the 25 year warranty the best part about all this is birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the usa i love my birch and i think you would too if you're looking for a new bed check out birch as i mentioned their memorial day sale is running now and you can get 25 percent off for a limited time though you can always click my link below for 20 percent off the garage door of the mind Look at that, nice, lots of humidity, lots of rainfall, and these guys are about to flower. You can see that more of those astrophytum, underappreciated Texas cactus, okay, and Mexican cactus too. You even have a species of Manfreda growing here uh, beneath uh, the Cromeria, which is actually, uh, I just seen it flowering. Where was it flowering? We'll have to get some. This is Cromeria. See, cool genus all over the, all over the New World, okay, North and South America, Little pink flowers that look like aliens. All right, like that H.R. Giger alien head. See that guy? Look at it. What's going on there? You see those petals have been morphed in. See up top, you got stems and you got those three petals up top. And two petals down below have been morphed into little uh, little glands. Providing oil for bees. See that? So those two glands down there at the bottom. The bees collect lipid molecules from that. Bees in the genus Centris. And they feed it to their larva. And then you got these weird ass fruits too. That ovary matures into this, look, this thing, look at that, with those little spikes on it. Some of them will actually stick to you, some of the species. There's 18 species in that genus, Cromeria. genus, and they're all parasites, partial parasites on other plants. But here, you can clearly see they're also providing cover for the astrophytum, okay? It's a very important plant ecologically, right? It's able to thrive here, and in doing so, it provides some cover for these little guys. Look at that, see that? They couldn't, they'd get fried in the full sun, which is not out right now, thank God. See that looking like a little sand dollar, like a little sand dollar just just sunk into the ground. Most of most of that plant's body is sunk into the ground. Well, it's a stem, but you know what I mean. Cacti are just photosynthetic stems. Mammillaria hydri, see that guy? See those spirals, all those aerials, those aerials arranged in a spiral. Aerials and tubercles, you know what I mean. You got those radial spines just emanating from there. You got a central spine in there too. Our old friend Lophophora. Hiding beneath the Vicellia rigidula, really, really cool underappreciated legume that smells like uh, some sort of fancy French perfume when it's flowering. And look at that new growth on that astrophytum. See that? That's all the growth that's occurred in the last few months. See how it's greener than the areas around it? See that? Creates a nice pattern. They got a bunch of rain here recently. This flower, it looks like, was not pollinated, so it's not going to be producing a fruit, so no seed. Astrophytum, unlike Lophophora, are obligate outcrossers. They're not self-fertile. So you need bees to be traveling from one plant to another, and they all need to be flowering at the same time. How do they do that? How do they know to flower at the same time? Okay, what are the cues? 
right? And if they don't flower at the same time, you don't produce any seeds. So kind of a drag. Anyway, get the, got enough rain, maybe they'll be flowering again. Some of them look like they still had buds on them. And a kind of serious fitchy. I look at that. He's doing good. Look how plump that little bastard is. Look at the spines on it. Such a nice pattern. All those radial spines. Got like 20, 20 radial spines. And then that one spine in the center, that central spine. Real banger when they flower too. Big pink flowers. You can see the yotes growing in the duff. Do you see the yotes in the duff? See that? All that duff of the vichelia, that legume, which provides the cover for them. Look at all the lichens on this stuff too. Very important. Look at all the lichens on it. Huh? This is Castilla erecta, but still covered in lichen. Over here we got a Karwinskia. Okay, look at that. Humboldtii. Humboldtiana. One of those two, I forget. Anyway, very toxic. Grows all the way down into Oaxaca. Member of the buckthorn family. Very toxic foliage, though. And berries. Some very healthy thelo cactus. See those guys? Again, beautiful pink flowers when they go off. Thelo cactus is quite a quite a large genus, too. I mean, not super large. You got five or six species. Look, it's wet enough that the lichen was actually uh, active, okay? That uh, that algae that's in there was actually photosynthesizing. See that brown stuff? And ancestral cactus shiri. Look at it. See, you got those fish hook spines. They recurve at the end. And then, even more interestingly, you got a big tuber in the ground right there. If your question is, can you eat it? Uh, I'm not going to answer that because, one, it's a stupid question. Two, it's missing the point, all right? You don't come out here to eat these things, all right? If you're ever in a, in a life and death situation where you might die, okay, it's probably because the world is ending. It's, eating a cactus root should be the last of your concerns. Regardless, it's got a tuber in there, a potato-like tuber. Uh, you probably can eat it, but it also probably tastes like hell. I would hope it does. Otherwise, uh, you know, ev evolution's not working because a lot of things would be trying to eat that. Regardless, that tuber enables it to grow in some extremely dry places. It act basically acts like a storage mechanism. See, there's the fruits of Castilla erecta, Cimarubaceae, Atlantis altissima family. Ooh, it's a very uh, oily fruit. Very conspicuous in red because uh, it's uh, dispersed by birds. Squeeze it open. Actually, it's a droop. There you go, the seeds over there. Anyway, I just dispersed the seed for it. I'll take a couple and spread them around. I always like to see more of these, even though they uh, they tend to stab me. And then, of course, we got Varilla Texana, which is in the sunflower family. This little succulent bastard sends up a little daisy-like flower, like you can kind of see over there but look at this astrophytum which you didn't even see there's another one hiding over there looks like this guy actually got pollinated that is a swollen fruit the flower is withered on top of it okay these guys look like they're getting ready to flower again then there's a little seedling over there see that doing very healthy here and it's protected land thank god so that guy over there look at it well i don't know what happened here but those are the seeds see there's a there's one looks like something gnawed on him a year or two ago, probably one of the feral pigs. There's little seedlings, but you can see those are the seeds. There's a, a fruit that's split open, and there are those seeds. Look how large astrophytum seeds are compared to the other, the uh, the seeds of other cacti. So I'll probably collect a couple of these and then just disperse them out. You know, I'll sow some around here. Got I always got to give back. Look at my Echinoceres fitchii. Look into my Echinoceres fitchii. All species of Echinoceres, all species in the genus have green stigmas. Just like that. See that? How many lobes you get on that one? About 10? Look at that pollen everywhere. Then you get that inferior ovary, so hopefully it'll mature to a fruit if this gets pollinated. Hopefully cross-pollinated. You got thelocactus, little thelocactus seedlings down there. They don't even care. They'll grow anywhere. And if, oh, look, there's an astro, too. You see the astro? See the astrophytum? And, of course, the whole ground is alive. All that black stuff, that's all uh, lichen. Could just go dormant. Castilla erecta. Look at his seeds right there. Ooh. Such a beautiful nightshade. Quinquilla lobata. Looking like a little radar dish. Purple flowers. Five petals fused together. A lot of cool nightshades in the desert. And then you got Hematocactus setospinus. See that? More recurved spines. Looks like that ancestral cactus. But uh, you got those, uh, those ridges. See that kind of spiraling uh, ribs. Amorexia. Looking real nice. I think it's Cochlospermum. No, it's in the genus Cochlospermum, but you could see those it's those folded palmate leaves. Vicelli rigidula seeds are almost ready. See that little bean pods? They are a legume. Not ready yet, though. See, it's still green. When that thing's fully brown, it'll just be hit split open, and those little seeds will go everywhere. It'll look like little lentils. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you got something out of that. Nice to kind of serious any acanthus. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. You see, we're out here at the Pea Preserve, okay, doing pollination, because a lot of these just aren't getting pollinated. See, these are all 
these right here, here's a good example. See this? These are all flowers. The black stuff is all flowers, old flowers. And you should, oh, there's a fruit right there, actually. But a lot of them don't, yeah, see, there's a couple seeds. But that thing should be loaded, okay? And none of these are getting, uh, none of these are getting pollinated. Their pollinators, for whatever reason, are not hitting these. So, I don't know if that's just because there's not many insects around or what. But, uh, regardless, it's sad. So, we're going in with a brush and we're, uh, we're doing it ourselves. It's the, it's the only way. So, you can see, I still got some stamens in there. The best way to do it would maybe be with tweezers. Uh, you know, take a stamen, put actually put it in the stigma, that little hand-shaped thing, in the center of the flower. But uh, that would obviously be a lot more time-consuming, so we're not doing that. So instead, what we're doing is just uh, using a brush, and that works. Yeah, I, I just looked at, at uh, the brush with a jeweler's loop and saw thousands of tiny pollen grains on it, so that'll, that'll do the trick.